looking at an aerial picture of our old neighborhood and there were five shipping containers that washed up into the neighborhood and all the other homes were completely destroyed so we thought maybe the thing to do would be to form an architectural design firm that specializes in solar and wind powered storm proof mm -hmm. earthquake proof <laughs> My name is Roy Moffis. I own Gorilla Design, and we specialize in solar and wind-powered homes, net zero homes. We're all trying to get together to find new ways to find solutions, you know? It's not just... I think it's pretty easy to stay focused on just the problem. Um, that's the easy way out, I think. What we've done here is come together with the folks over at NewQuest and they do uh, fabrication and manufacturing for uh, some big industries like mining and oil drilling and all of that sort of thing. We've gotten our technologies together to come up with a better solution. This will eventually be uh, our manufacturing facility for the containers as they are sort of trying to use those same skill sets to move in a green direction. Forty watts, um, but we've got a thousand amp hours of battery, um, and <clears throat> the wind turbine is a 1.5 kilowatt. <laughs> This is the heart and soul right here. This is the water filtration unit. It filters water down to 0.2 microns, which means you can mechanically separate out Giardia, E. coli, Salmonella, and several other waterborne pathogens. This is my whole life. This is what I do. Yeah. And like I, um, I, and I, I do it all across the country. It's really starting to expand way more than I ever thought. You know, we also designed a, an emergency disaster relief unit. The challenges that we face uh, in Japan and, and all of the people suffering there throughout China. Uh, I mean, it, it literally it happens every day. In Joplin, Missouri, um, we, you know, we're looking at the floods in Alabama and, and Mississippi and Louisiana, and it just goes on. And I think that the time for ducking our heads and trying to pretend like it's not happening is gone. Do you have any projects kind of 
uh, ready to go with emergencies and disasters. I, I well, it's emergencies. I've been I've been ready to go for a long time. I, yeah. I, it's really about funding. It's about getting in front of the right people. Right. Like, cause somebody at FEMA is gonna go. Like, if I can get it to that guy, just show him. What it really turns into is about enlisting and enrolling people. Right. You know, I got to a point where I, I stopped uh, trying to enroll folks. Like, if I had to convince you that solar power... Yeah, you're like, not the right Yeah, person. no, I'm not, I'm not having that discussion. I'm not wasting yeah. my energy yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. I happen to live in Utah. <laughs> so I, I just, I, what I did was I just said, you know what? Promotion, slow motion. I'm gonna just do it and show people. Right. And and and, and I think that's what people want to see. If you have this done, this could be the you know really the springboard for all kinds of other stuff. It's well, cool. you know, there's I've got other projects. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Where are they? In Salt Lake? Yeah. We oh, actually see them. well, we built the very first shipping container structure in Salt Lake. We actually work with the city. We, this is like last year. Yeah. Where at? At 1165 East Princeton in Sugar House. No way! Yeah, we actually no. We worked East with we worked with the city Princeton. and amended building code. <laughs> uh, this is probably the best angle to see. We've got five kilowatts of solar on top there, and then there's nine solar thermal panels uh, on top of that. Now those are tied into the swimming pool, um, and we'll show you that here in just a minute. We use the swimming pool as a geothermal heat sink to uh, run the snow melt for all of this. All our right. client, our client is a school teacher, and she usually has to get up and leave the house by before six. Um, and in the winter time in Utah, uh, <laughs> that means ice. That means a lot of snow. <laughs> that means a lot of ice. Um, so what we really wanted to do is take that into consideration. And for some people, uh, snow melt is kind of a luxury. For her, on a giant slippery slope, it was sort of like we need to have that. <laughs> or they could see their neighbors. They, she could just go right straight into her neighbor's window. This is my friend Gabriel Guzman. How you doing? Yeah, good, man. Um, Gabe's from Colombia, and uh, there's, there's been a disaster there, a flooding disaster. You want to say something about that? Yeah, uh, right now Colombia is having a lot of trouble with the flooding problems, and it's around 6,000 people who lost everything. And that's what, one of the reasons that I want to help them. So I contact the president of Colombia and explain to him what I can do help those people. I mean, because the people who lost everything, the house, inside, the furniture, I mean, bags, cotton and clothes, everything. They lost everything they, what they have. And so one of the former president's brother contacted me and he said, man, I need your help. I mean, please, with all your knowledge and all your contact people that you have in USA, please help me to find some solution and quick solution and cheap solution for those people to have a decent houses and, and increase the, the quality of their life. Right. So that's basically... So what do you think? So I think the Gorilla Design is, is the best option that we can get for them because it's all green and it's all what we need. We already have the electricity from our sun and also the water resource that we have. And they're going to they wanna live happy in those those kind of quality houses that we're going to provide to them. Helmer, uh, at DNA 10, if you yeah. say a few words about Helmer. Yeah, Helmer, I mean, he owns a company and some architecture firm who also want to find some alternate prototype houses, fusionize or integrate the environment with our design. Right. That's the more important thing. And DNA 10 is all DNA about 10, that. We, we focus on that right now because I think the most important thing is to save this work and make the world a better place to live. We are going to make a good thing in the future to work together. Definitely, yeah. man. Okay. Definitely. I really appreciate it. No. Uh, You're welcome. So the pressure is mine. So hopefully we have more people like you with these great ideas um, to save the world and to make the world a better place. <laughs> Oh, my God.
Do you know how much ass we are about to kick? I, I, Do you have any idea? <laughs> I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I am here working on a project, um, an RFP, that came out from the city of Boston to build E plus uh, urban design buildings. And uh, I came out to meet with Guerrilla Design so that um, I could get a, a clear understanding of you know, how to build with um, reused cargo containers, um, you know, steel structures um, for sustainability purposes. At this time in the state of Massachusetts, I'm the only female weatherization contractor. I'm the only minority company that actually made it through all of those hoops and loops. So I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, Guerrilla Design. Thank you, Platt Engineering. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody, for being supportive. And keep a lookout for Team Alchemy. You don't have to compromise uh, luxury or your standard of living in order to be green. Um, and I got to say to that, every challenge um, offers uh, a new solution. Um, and honestly, the reason I'm so bold and so confident about um, facing those challenges is because of my team, is because of the community of support around me uh, and all the folks. I mean, there are so many people <laughs> and finding folks that are, that are leaders and followers and uh, really providing a space for people to contribute. Alyssa. She is the person who inspired me to start playing with architecture. There's Chuck and Marianne and uh, Rupert and Troy and, and all the guys at Heliocentric and all the guys uh, who are out there trying to make a difference at the city. Uh, the city of Murray, uh, the city of Salt Lake. There's Del Solio, who is the only biodiesel uh, provider in the valley. They actually have sponsored us moving the container around. Um, there's George, uh, the, uh, the guys at All For One Towing. Pepper Provenzano uh, for, with Tree Lake. Uh, you know, he moved to Arizona and gave me presentation boards that I ended up taking to Anaheim, California that led to the Spain thing happening. It's, it's all so interconnected. Uh, Michael Andrews, um, uh, who has you know, been a supporter for a while and just recently uh, really redoubled his efforts. And there's Alan, you know, uh, Alan Oliver, all of the hours of editing. Leah at Green Beginnings creating a program or supporting a program for vets returning home uh, from Iraq and putting them to work uh, at green businesses. There's Gabriel and Helmer uh, down in Colombia working with DNA 10 and all of the things that we're doing to try to get help to the people of Colombia. Uh, Eric Aragon um, and, and Dominique, his wife. They were always pushing the edge. And what's interesting is that you can't spill clean energy. The wellhead does not burst uh, on a wind generator. When we look at the cost of energy, then I think that we really need to have the discussion about the cost of spills. We need to take into consideration the cost of having a tsunami destroy a, a nuclear power plant and create a toxic situation for the whole planet. What's the cost of that? And I, I'm sure that when we, and when we do the cost analysis for that versus how much money GE saved with the walls of the containment facility, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that we could go ahead and spend the extra money on the walls. Um, and I, I just think that we're, we're not having uh, a genuine conversation because maybe we're not realizing all the elements. Um, how, much, how much does nature do for you for free? all of those trees filtering out all that air. You think about it, if we had to run machines to clean the air, how much would that cost? What is the cost your child coughing all the time because of bad air quality, um, asthma attacks, 
neurological agents in the air, what's the cost? What's the real cost? And what's the cost of doing nothing? This is an opportunity for us to rise together and as one to answer these challenges. I really believe this to be our finest hour. I think, uh, I think we've yet to see all the great things to come. That's what I'm working on.